Good morning, everyone. Business Development TV TT is live. It is 10.32 a.m. here on the sweet island of Trinidad and Tobago. In the North Z, yes. Sorry. Wonderful. So today, Bernadette and I are going to be discussing, we're talking about this entire month, just to let everybody know, this entire month of February, we're talking about branding and how important branding is versus sales right we already know that sales in business is what matters but branding does have an element to help you generate sales we discussed that in our video our our training last week all right um and this week we're talking about something that's important and what we call your second sales funnel so if you're branding and you're bringing people into your sales funnel, basically you're taking those people who don't really know who you are, they've come across your brand, they know who you are, you've given them value, they've come into your sales funnel. But what is the second sales funnel, all right? What is the second aspect of it that we're talking about today? And that is... Nurturing your customers, nurturing your leads to become customers exactly all right so we're nurturing our leads to become customers i just want to make sure we're live over on youtube quickly before we continue so bernie what do we mean by nurturing our all right yes well the thing is um the thing is yes you let's say for instance we sell markets okay let's say for instance you sell something <laughs> as simple as markets sharply markets it's a uh, typical what we call commodity all right you're in the retail business and you sell a commodity such as markers and there are different people who need your markers who need good markers and different people who use the markers for different reasons so you might put up a blog you might put up uh, information about the marker for a teacher the marker for a student, the marker for a teenager. And then again, the scenarios that we all live, whatever is happening in your life at that moment in time that you need a marker. So that's what we talk about, nurturing your community. There are different sales funnels. There are different reasons why somebody would need to buy from you right now. Now, I was at an event yesterday and someone was talking to me and she knows that I do online marketing, I do online strategy. And she asked me, says, I've been using, I've been doing social media for the last two years and I've gotten nothing for it. And so therefore social media does not work. I want to tell you that social media Whoops! It does. Why it's not working for you is because you're not doing it properly. You're talking. I, I mean, I, I can't say all the main reasons, all the reasons why it is that you're not getting any sales right now. But this is the reason why Hillary and I mm -hmm. started our video. What you're gonna call it? Mara, series. Our video. <laughs> Yes. Business Development, Toronto Tobago. Business Development TV, Toronto Tobago. All right? It's developing your business. And that's why we are, we thought that it would be very important to move you into community. Now, Facebook, um, how you would say, encourages people who have communities on their platform. Because when you have a community, it's because you're serving a group of people and you can have that in the form of creating a community group or you can have a group or you can have a private group you can have a public group but the fact that people are coming onto facebook to come to your group to come to your community to talk to the people in the community facebook will reward you so you have to find a way to create a community around what you sell all right yes. so um the reason why hillary and i have moved our live broadcast to youtube 
just want to reiterate for those who've not come to any previous events is um, um, any previous videos. The reason why we moved from doing live on Facebook to live on YouTube is because on YouTube, our content will be found. Right? It's what yeah. we talked about most, well, at least two or three videos last at month. Two or three videos ago where we were talking about the open and closed um, social platforms. Social platform. Now, Bernie, just to um, go back a little to, you were talking about why so, um, social media doesn't work. I just want to say that, you know, as we're talking about community, which mm -hmm. is where your second sales funnel, and I say second sales funnel because you have to think of your customers, your leads as following a journey, right? We've talked about this before. It's a customer journey. They go from not knowing you to nurturing them, all right? And inside of the communities, whether they are groups on Facebook, groups on LinkedIn, social media helps you nurture those customers because we all know it's easier and it's cheaper in the business world to get a repeat sale versus a new sale. Correct. Right? Correct. We all know that. So your efforts, yes, need to be split. And we talked about different things in terms of getting the new customers. But once you have them, now you've got to use social media to nurture those customers to get them to buy again and again and again. All right. So that's where we are. But the one of the fundamental reasons that either of these strategies that we're talking about is not going to work for you on social media is if you're inconsistent. And just a couple, you talked about you met somebody yesterday. And I was actually reading an article yesterday as well that talked about that, where people keep talking about social media is not um, working for them. Mm -hmm. But then you've got people who are walking into a store with their phone in their hand on an Instagram feed with an image and they say, I would like to order this. Social media is obviously working for that company, exactly. but it's not working for you. So All the right? question we want you to ask yourself today <clears throat> is why a competitor and it's not working for me? That's the better question. What are the actions? Yeah. What are the actions that you are not taking on a daily basis, mm -hmm. all right, that is not allowing social media to work for you? Now, bringing it into the that second sales funnel with your customers, I want to ask a question, like, what is something typical that um, businesses do in terms of rewarding their customers or appreciating their customers? What is something that they typically do? Well, I like to think of social media as your actions that you will typically take offline mm -hmm. and you do it online. Okay? So take, for instance, a mother. <laughs> a mother wants her kid to learn how to make her bed. All right? Now you don't... What, oh, so, okay, so you tell your child, you need to make your bed when you wake up in the morning. Straighten out the sheets, et cetera, et cetera. Smoothen it out. And you demonstrate to her how to make her bed. So the next morning, she makes her bed. And of course, the pillow, instead of being at the top of the bed, is at the bottom of the bed, and the blanket is on the floor. Okay? But she straightened her sheets. All right? So instead of talking about the blanket on the floor and the pillow at the bottom of the bed, you congratulate her and tell her, thank you, that she took the whatever minutes, you don't need to stress the minutes, she took the time to straighten and make up a bed, all right? As she leaves the room, that's when you pick up the pillow, fold it up, put it on the bed, and take the, uh, sorry, pick up the blanket, fold it, put it on the bed, and take the pillow and put it to the bottom of the, top of the bed. So therefore, you've demonstrated to her what a good bed looks like. And therefore, she has a standard to reach to. It's the same thing with your community. And I ask myself this question all the time. If a business person who knows and understands that treating the customer properly is important for repeat sales, 
Why do you treat your suppliers and your friends horribly? You've got to be the same person, all right? Because when you're the same person, then all around, everybody is going to recommend you. And that's kind of like how you build your community. When you build your community offline, online, do it the same way. Congratulate people for the little things <coughs> you do. Congratulate people, you know, celebrate their birthday. And that's why people came up with this loyalty program thing. But if you don't do it genuinely, your customers, your community is going to read right straight past your so-called um, face, your facade. Mm -hmm. mm -hmm. it's got if it's not genuine. Yeah. Yeah. Well, and that's what I mean about treating your suppliers and your friends as well as you treat your customers because you know your customers are going to come back and buy from you. Now, you, you touched a, a very interesting point there because your suppliers, um, there are some people who would supply a business, a certain product, but they'd never recommend that business, right? Yeah. And that is pretty much because of that relationship. Now, that that is a, a, a different topic. Yeah, I know a little bit there. But, little, yeah. but the thing is, it's, it's that how you treat people. Mm. Now, you want your... The, the the brand and the facade that you put on because uh, just linking it back to branding you know um you would tell people about your your core values and all of these things for the new customer all right for the right. brand new customer but then the the actual customers who have already bought from you and who are thinking of buying again you don't treat them the same way you would treat a brand new customer yeah and that's where the disparity on, comes in. Right. They focus so much on a new person that they forget to treat the treat. previous ones. With so the previous ones, exactly. Now, we talked about using social media um, to, to nurture those, those customers. Mm -hmm. How important is it to do that in a group versus can you do it? Can you create that community on a public page, on a business page, or is it better to pull those customers aside now and put them somewhere that's safe? They could ask questions, those type of things inside of a inside of a private community. Correct. Um, well, that's in a re that's the reason mainly why you and I created the business development TV group mm -hmm. in yeah. on Facebook. Um, mainly because we want the people who want to come closer to us to protect their identity because most people don't want to see that um, they're making mistakes on social media. They don't they don't like to be the, what you just call it, the guinea pig. The guinea pig, yes. So which is why we, we tend to keep our um, community questions private. We don't, we don't say so-and-so ask the question, you know, Harry, Harry Seepol asked me a question. No, we're not going to use the person's name. I'm sorry, Harry Seepol, if there's anybody out there by that name, I did not talk to you yesterday. But anyway, <laughs> going into community, um, I want to touch on a few points. Now, Hillary, yes, deals with the IT side of things, and that's why she, she constantly talks sales funnels, and she constantly talks second, second sales funnel, et cetera, et cetera. And that is exactly what it is, all right? Um, I like to talk on the, how you call it, the, the artsy side of things. Which the people I, side of things. I was an artsy type person, but I'm discovering that I am a type of artsy kind of person. But anyway, so the points I want to make with regards to building a community, um, not so much focusing on your brand, but your brand will get the benefit mm -hmm. if you build the community correctly. All right, your brand will grow. All right, uh, but don't put your brand first. All right. Now, I yes, I wrote a blog yesterday, and I I kind of went off on a rant um, yesterday uh, with regards to um yeah putting your brand first and how it actually blocks the the people from coming closer to you. All right. Anyway, so. Points I'd like to make today with regards to building community the right way. The key words that people are looking 
to solve their problem, solve, find a solution for their need must be in your name. Now, like for instance, uh, I, I, I've said this before, but I can repeat it here again for sure. I went in, I started painting my house and Sissons has been around forever, okay? So I went online on my phone and I searched Sissons because I want to buy paint from Sissons. Sissons was previously two, three years previous to my looking up Sissons was purchased by another big company and they changed the name of the domain to palette something or the other. Yes, painters use palettes, but I am not looking to buy a palette. I want paint and I want to go to Sissons. Now Sissons as a brand has been around forever. Okay, so this is what we used to, I would call up a friend before the internet existed, <laughs> call up a friend before and says, do you know where the closest Sissons location is? Now in today's digital world, you would not call a friend for that. You go on the internet and you ask Google, right? Yeah. Where is the closest Sissons um, store that I could go buy my paint? Right. I couldn't find Sissons. I ended up in mm. Germany. Really? <laughs> So guess what? I had to call a friend and ask, where is the lo lo closest <laughs> Sissons location to me? You know? <laughs> now, so if the friends had a community, you would have known about the change and, the, and all of those things. And you would have already been there. You would already know where to find the location. You would know all of those things, right? And yes, it takes time and it takes effort to create the community, to nurture the community. But companies have to understand in the digital space, people, if they can't find you on Google, they're not going, you're not going to get that sale, basically. If I, if I can't find you digitally, I'm going to go to the people that I can find, if you could, you know, get there reasonably, right? Because you ended up in Germany. Obviously, you're not going to go to Germany. But you will find an alternative. And yeah. there goes Sisson sale or whoever Sisson's is now, right? And that's the point that we're making, that you have a brand that people know, but mm -hmm. you're not taking care of those customers. You're not, you don't have that space where you could talk to your customers. And yes, a lot of these brands have been around long before the digital time. That doesn't mean that you can't start transferring them from the little oh. note cards, your roller decks now into a digital community. Yeah. And and that also you, you touch base on that a little bit. The point that next point I'd like to make is your content. You need to be putting up content and a way to nurture leads, people who have given you their name and their phone number and their email. A way to nurture leads is by helping people and even people who purchase from you, helping them to use your product more efficiently, easier. Um, if you want to go back to paint again, you can tell your painters how meaning you and me, because, um, you know, I, I paint, I paint myself, you know, paint my walls. So you hire somebody. Well, <laughs> I do the scaffolding and the climbing and the ladder and stuff. I hire people, but the ones that I could reach, I I, I paint. Mm -hmm. Um, and mainly because I do it on my own. I mean, just like some people would use flowers as their therapy, I will paint. Okay, so mm -hmm. it's my therapy. So content help your people, do it yourself community, use your products better. Or mm -hmm. the other thing is. Like, for instance, if I need to, let's say I was doing modding the other day and I went to Google and I asked how to mod so-and-so without the dust because I did not want the dust. And everybody else in all the, how you call it, the, the little groups who would come in and mod your gypsum kept saying there's no way that you could do any modding without the dust. And and I don't like dust. Right. So there are lots of fathers, um, mothers, house owners don't like dust, okay? Because it means work. So anyway, 
I found a way to do modding without dust. Right. So and that content. content, 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 content is important. And that mm. is a, a, a so easy to help your people use your products and your services better. They will love you for it. Mm -hmm. you come back again and again and again. Right. Um, yes. So content is a very important part of that second sales funnel. And this is where the time and the efforts, the strategy, the planning comes in because you are now thinking about how your product serves the customer. You are not now only thinking of getting the product into the customer's hand, which mm -hmm. is basically just the sales. Mm -hmm. You are now thinking of, ways that my customers are going to use my products how can i help them um to use more all right because somebody who's painting their house maybe they want to paint maybe they have potted plants that they want to paint all yeah. right but if you don't share with them the different ways that they could use your product they're not going to come and buy it. they'll only buy wall paint and your potted paint would stay on the shelf and then you have to throw them out or you sell them at reduced prices. Yes. Yes. Right. Um, a next way to nurture your community. Same thing you do offline. Same thing you do online. Create reasons for your community to come together. So have fun. So if you don't, I mean, I'm not saying throw a party for them or throw a fat for your community. There are ways that your products, because of what you do, the, I mean, it's, it's got to be creative. What fun it is to have, um, like for instance, shoes people do this for <coughs> shoes companies. They create their communities very well. And it's so well created that the actual shoe company doesn't need to put up content <laughs> because their community is constantly putting up pictures about themselves, about the shoe that they just bought. And this mm -hmm. is so great and on and on. So, I mean, take it from the example of the shoes company, uh -oh. uh, how you could create a community around the products and services that you do. And, and this comes to the next point of creating traditions. Um, you know, these days, everything is, uh, I don't know if you got caught up in the broom, the, the, the NASA gravity, the... <laughs> International Gravity Day the other day with uh, the broom, that the broom can stand up by itself. So anyway, um, it turned out to be a hoax that brooms can stand up on its own any day of the year <laughs> or any day of the century. But it was fun. All right. So have fun. Any questions came in? No, 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 no. One sec. Uh, I'm sorry. I'm trying to. Um, right. Okay. Well, yeah, another I point I'd like, I'd like to make is um, testing. You, the brand manager, you, the marketing team, you, the marketing exec, you, the chief marketing officer, you have ideas how you want your brand to look out there. But guess what? If you're not asking your community, you're going to be wasting your time. Yep. And I take this from the example of, was it Old Navy or it was another company? Um, I forget, but let's say for instance, it was Old Navy. I mean, Old Navy decided to change their logo. All right, or let's, let's just forget if it was Old Navy because I don't remember which company it was, but it was a big company, retail store in the States, closed store. They decided to change their logo because they were getting tired of their logo. Guess what? Their community got wind of what they were going to do and they kicked up a storm on social media. And if they did not listen, if the company, brand manager, CMO, whatever, did not listen to the community, what will you be doing to your community? You are telling them, we don't care about it. Important. Stop talking. Leave me alone. I know what I'm doing. And, mm -hmm. and, and and who's gonna buy from you? The community are the people who buy from you. So if you shun them and if you don't listen to them, you're gonna lose sales. Yeah. They're gonna walk away. They're like, and you don't care about me, I'm gone. 
any change that you're about to make to your product, the first people you want to ask are your customers, not your CEO. Sorry, you're not important. Um, because your CEO doesn't buy the products, okay? The VP of finance does not buy the products. The customers, your customers are the ones who have bought the products and therefore they're the ones that are most important in any change you want to make to your product. Now, I'm not saying that, okay, well, if all 15 million of your customers are going to have 15 million choices, no, that's not what we're saying, but get the voice of your customer. Even if you still make the change, but you've heard the customers, because I remember when the thimble was retired from Monopoly. Do you remember that? Yes. <laughs> I remember when the thimble was retired from Monopoly. I remember That's seeing it. Favorite. That was my favorite piece. Uh, piece on Monopoly. And I'm sure it was a lot of people's favorite piece because there was a lot of talk around the thimble. Now, I don't know if, um, who, who's run Monopoly again? Um, Parker Brothers. Parker. Right, Parker Brothers. Now, I don't know if they did anything like made oh, a special good. edition with the last thimbles, all right? Yeah. But what they did was they announced the retirement of the thimble. Yes. Okay? They played fun <laughs> with it, all right? Yeah, because huge, they said, what? Was it a huge reaction? Was huge. There was a huge reaction, all right? And I don't, I can't remember what the results was, but if I were a brand manager and I saw that reaction from the digital space, I would say, guess what? We've got a business opportunity. More sales. Here. More sales. Yeah. Create a limited edition with the thimble. <laughs> and guess what? Your sales would increase. But you've got to share this with your community. All right, mm -hmm. share it with your community. And I wouldn't be surprised if that just wasn't a, you know, a very bright marketer inside of Parker Brothers that said, let's retire a very beloved piece of the Monopoly game <laughs> and see what happens. <laughs> and guess what? The seeing what happens in effect is what Bernie was talking about with the testing. Because you're not actually going to do it, but you're going to test to see what's going to be the reaction. If you get no reaction, great. You could go ahead and retire the thimble. But if you do from your community, you have an opportunity now for increased sales because of a thimble. <laughs> okay. Yep. 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 And, and that's why, in a sense, many of the companies at the beginning of the big uh, digital, how you call it, was, was the word disruption? You don't have we don't have as many disruptions as we have had as we had at the turn of the century when mm -hmm. digital was really taken off and Facebook had launched their platform and, and, and the social media world was taking off. The old icons, Kodak, um, the famous H um what you call it, VHS store. Um blo blockbuster. blockbusters. They thought that their sales were fantastic. I don't need to pay attention to these stupid Netflix people. They don't know what they're talking about. And they did not realize where people were going. Mm -hmm. They were too busy on their high horse. And, 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 the sales. and they were bringing in the sales. They were bringing in the sales. All you're doing is focusing like, on the sales disappear. and not focusing on the, your customers. Yeah. The, same I, the other thing is in Toronto Tobago, radio is still big. And I, I, I was listening to radio the other day and supermarkets are still advertising the same way that they've been advertising since I was five years old. Within one minute, they shot off 20 different products with 20 different prices. In there one are better ways to advertise your products than your yeah. prices. Mm -hmm. All right. Um, if you're ready to move into the digital world, give us a call. Yeah. There are many companies in Toronto Tobago <coughs> that are not doing social media 
paying attention to their buyers. Um, so Hillary and I are on the brink of many um, simpler ways to build your network, because that's what you have to do. you got to build your network. And after you build your network, you get names and emails and phone numbers from them. Then you got to nurture them. All right. So if that's what you want, then definitely give Hillary and I a call. We are on YouTube. We are on Facebook. We are at, we are on in Instagram. We are on Pinterest. We will create your sales funnel for you in a way that your competitor will not know what in the world you are doing and all of a sudden you will have a bigger bigger market share that's what you want give us a call that's my rant <laughs> thank you very much bernie all right so this week we've talked about that second sales funnel we're going to be diving a little deeper into that community you need to start thinking about the structure of your community how you're going to build it and we're actually going to have a community manager come in and talk to you about those different things that you need to do to set up your community keep your community going and how to get from your community those repeat sales all right so next week that's carded for next week all, all right, right. And does, does um your community manager do her what is her main uh, social platform that she works on? Facebook. All the platforms, Facebook. She works Facebook. Mainly. So the main part. But this strategy, what I have seen is that even inside of um, it, there are things that could cross over to LinkedIn communities if mm -hmm. you are the owner of the community. So we're talking about if you're the owner of the community. This is not if you are going into communities to try and... Um, yeah, learn from them. Learn, learn from them. them. Yes, exactly. All right. Not you participating. This is you owning the community, owning the community and, and running the community, and, and, and extract sales from your community. Exactly. Yeah. Right? yeah. And I will. Yes. And then there's always great. There's always more coming. Um, we're here every Thursday. So thank you for watching our video. We will be back next week Thursday live on YouTube on youtube don't forget to subscribe um and also follow us Re send a request yes down below the uh, link to join our uh, group our facebook group will be in the description of this video so you could come in there um it's a private community so that you could meet with us chat with us get into the sales funnel to be able to figure out how to maximize your sales and your profit this year all right. Uh, Have a great one. Development TV. Have a great one, everybody. Bye.